Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. Today we'll do the second part of multiplication and division of decimals. Yesterday we did the first 10 problem 1 through 10. Today we'll do 11 through 20, part 2 of 2. From number 11 to 20. Okay? Let's get going then. Part 2 of 2, as I said, I should have done this thing ahead of time and I forgot. Two of two. Let's get going. Number 11. As soon as I write the problems on the blackboard, I want you to do them yourself first. Number 11 says 0.43 times 1.5. That's a 4. 0.43 times 1.5. Do it yourself. 0.43 times 1.5. Here we go. So as we said before, when we are multiplying decimals, multiplying decimals is no different than multiplying whole numbers. Just do what you do when you are multiplying the whole numbers and then worry about the decimals. Worry about the decimal point at the end. So here we go. We have 43. We have 43 times 15. 43 times 15 is what we are dealing with. 15 times 3 is 45. 5 carry 4. Notice we are multiplying by 15, we are not doing the baby step, we are not multiplying by 5 and then by 1, we are multiplying by the 15. 15 times 3 is 45, 5 carry 4, 15 for the 60, 60 plus 4 is 64. We have our answer, now we can go back and worry about the decimal point. Here we have two decimal points from here, 1 and 2, two places for decimal and here we have 1, so we pick up our decimal point which is sitting here, we move it to the left three places, here we go. 1, 2, and 3, it ends up here. So the final answer is 0 0.43, 0 0.43 times 1.5 equals 0 0.645. Always put the leading zero before the decimal for emphasis. It serves no other purpose than the fact that it's easier to see. It's, you, cannot, you cannot miss the decimal point. Number 12. Do it yourself. Next one problem is also, as I said before, 1.5 divided by 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Let's get going. 1.5 divided by 0 0.05. Multiply top and bottom by 100 so that we are dealing with the whole numbers, so that we have no number, so that we no longer have to deal with decimals. That's the trick. We multiply top and bottom by the same number, we are not changing the value, we are multiplying it by 1. So 1 1.5 times 100 is 150, very simple. And 0 0.05 times 100 is going to move the decimal two spots right here, so it's going to become 5. That's it, we are done. Divide top and bottom by 5, 15 has three zeros and 0 has no zeros. Answer is 30. Of course the answer is 30. What else did we expect it to be? It was 150. Think of this, think of this as a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty. A dollar fifty. Think of this as a dollar fifty. A dollar fifty has how many nickels? 0. 0.5. Think of this as a nickel, five cents. How many nickels does a dollar fifty have? A dollar has twenty nickels. Dollar fifty is going to have thirty nickels, of course. That's exactly what we found. Next one, number 13. Number 13. If you take your dollar fifty and break it up into nickels, you're going to end up having 30 equal parts. That's what it says. Number 13. 6.25 times 3.9. 6.25 times 3.9. Do it yourself. I insist that this particular problem you do yourself first. Okay? Here we go. What we are dealing with here is six and a quarter, six and a quarter times three three point nine. Three point nine, just to keep our life simple, I'm gonna pretend it is four. Just to keep it simple, okay? Watch what happens. It'll be easier, is it'll be easier to do the work if we do four times six and a quarter. You'll see why in a second. Four times six and a quarter. 
4 times 6 is 24 and 4 quarters make a 1. So the answer is 25. The question is, what does 25 represent? 25 represents, 25 represents 4 times 6 and a quarter. We do not have 4 times 6 and a quarter, we have 3.9. We have 3.9. So 4 times 6 and a quarter equals 25. We know that. We don't want 4, we want 3.9. We need to subtract 0.1. We need to subtract 0.1. If we subtract 0.1 from 4, we'll end up with 3.9. 0.1, 1 times this quantity, 6.25, is simply 0 0.625. See, 0.1 times 6.5, the 6.25, the decimal is going to move here, it's going to become 0.625. That's it, that's your answer. All we have to do is do our work. All we have to do is do do our work, line up the decimal points and you're done. There you go. 25 minus 6.25 is your answer. So 0 minus 5, you cannot take anything from 0, so we can have to borrow one here. So 10 minus 5 is 5, this is a 9, 9, this becomes 9, 9 minus 2 is 7, this becomes 9 because we had borrowed one, 9 minus 3 is, 9 minus 6 is 3, and when you borrowed one from 5, 5 became 4, 4 minus, seven. there you go. The answer is 24.375. Number 13, uh, number 14. Number 14. Number 14. Number 14 says 12.03 times point zero one two. Point zero, one two. Let's see what we can do. We need the room, so we're gonna have to erase it. We're gonna have to erase stuff. All of the other stuff is gone, gone as well. One more time. What we did originally was four times six and a, it should say six and a quarter, not six and a half. It's a good thing I started in check. So first we did four times six and a quarter, which was twenty-five exactly. We don't want four times six and a quarter. We wanted three point nine. So. If you subtract, if you subtract 0 0.1 from 4, we'll end up with 3.9. 3.9 times 6 and a quarter is what you see here. And that's exactly what we wanted. Do you understand? Let's do it out here. So we have 12.03 times 12. Times 12. Okay? Again, we're not going to multiply by 2 and 1. We're going to multiply by 12. 12 times 3 is 36. 6 carry 3 but this is just a 0, carry 3 but this is just a 0 so this comes here. Ordinarily I wouldn't have put a 3 there, it's just for your benefit. It's, if it's 0, it's the 36 is just going to come here. So one more time, 12 times 3 is 36, 12 times 2, 12 times 2 is 24, 4 carry 2, 12 times 1 is 12, plus 2 is 14. That is your answer. Now we go back and worry about our decimal point. Now we go back and worry about decimal point. Here we have two decimal places, 1, 2, and here we have 3, 1, 2, 3. So here is our decimal place, we're going to have to move it 5 spots, here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it looks like it comes in the front. And there is your answer. And there is our answer, our answer is, this quantity is equal to, again, put a leading 0, always put a leading 0 here, even though it's not there, put a leading 0 for emphasis. Point one four four three six one four four three six. That's it. We're done. Again, had it been a real exam, we wouldn't take as much time to do it all out. You don't have to. It's a multiple choice exam that you're preparing for. Whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or TES or SE or SAT or SAT. As I have always reminded you, these are multiple choice questions and multiple choice exams, and you have to keep that in mind. For the most part, these exams are multiple choice, and therefore. You don't have to do it out and find out the exact value, exact answer. It's not necessary. You just have to be able to recognize the right answer. So let's do it again. Let's do it again a little bit faster. Here's what we're going to do. The question is asking how much is 12.03 times 0 0.012. Watch what happens. It says 12.03. Let's forget this freaking 03. It's just 12 times that. You with me so far? That's easy now. We know what 12 times 12 is. 12 times 12 is 144. I hope you know your perfect squares, up to 15 at least. 12 times 12 is 144. And now we worry about decimal point. Except now, you have to keep in mind 
that by removing 0 0.03 we no longer have it because we removed it we just have this part we just have this part we have one two three spots so here's our decimal and we just move it one two three it moves here and then you look at the answer choice and pick the one answer choice that comes closest to it what we came up what we came up here is 0.144 and what what you have in the exam is 0.14436 that's your right answer that's the one that comes closest to it we don't have to carry out the exact precise figures you understand number 15 number 15 Number 15 says, twelve point zero eight times one point four. Twelve point zero eight times one point four. What can we do? Again, if you want, you can do it out. If you want, you can do it out. Twelve point zero eight. Twelve. 1208 rather 1208 times 14 and you can do it out of course why not let's do it out shall we 14 times 8 is again we're not multiplying we're not multiplying by 4 and 1 like a, we're not baby let's just multiply by 14 14 times 8 how much is 14 times 8 but oh, don't look at me how the hell do I know I know 14 times 10, 14 tens are 140, that I don't know. If you multiply 14 by 10, it's 140. We don't want 10, we want only 8 of them. So just subtract 214, which I know is 28. Are you with me so far? And we also know that 140 times 140 minus 30, 140 minus 30 would have been exactly 110. Since it's 28, it's going to be 110 plus 2, which is 112. So stay with me in the story. It's very important that you stay with me in the story. This is a zero which means 112, 2 is going to come here, 1 is going to come here, 112, and the remaining 1 is going to go here. You with me? 1, 1, 2, that's 112. How do we arrive at 112? It's very simple. 140 represents 10 14. We don't want 10 14s, we want 8 14, so we subtracted 2 14s from it. We subtracted 2 14s. 2 14s are 28. And when we do that, what we end up is 8 14. 140 minus 30 would have been 110, therefore 140 minus 28 is going to be 112. Let's carry on. 14, 14 times 2 is 28, 28 plus 1 is 29, 9, carry 2, 14 times 1 is 14 plus 2 is 16. Is 16. Now we worry about our decimal point. Here we have two of them. 1, 2, and here we have 1, 3. We have to move the decimal three places. Here is our decimal point. We're going to move it three spots. One, two, three. It's going to go right here. 16.9 is the answer. 16.9 is the answer. Do you understand? Now, if you didn't want to do all this mumbo jumbo, if you didn't want to do all this mumbo jumbo, there is there is another way of estimating it. Not the exact value, but a damn good estimate. And this is and if you want to estimate, here is what you do. I need the room obviously. Here is what we're going to do. Watch what happens. We're going to pretend that 12.08 is 12.1. We're going to pretend that it is 12.1 and this is 1.4. 1.4 is same as 0.4 is same as 4 over 10. It is same as 4 over 10, which is same as 2 fifth. That's 0.4. And 0.1, instead of writing 0.1, is same as 1 tenth. Are you with me? We're just estimating it. I'm going this slowly just because I'm explaining things. Okay, if I were doing it on my own, there's no point in taking this long if the estimate is going to take you longer than the actual method. You have to go faster, obviously. So here we go. I'm going to pick up speed. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 fifths. 12 times 2 fifths is going to be 24 fifths. And then 1 times 1 tenth times 1 is 1 tenth. I need the room, so I'm going to raise it. Keep in mind that the answer was 16.9. 16.912. So what were we? We have three terms, we have to do the last term. So we have one tenth times two fifth plus one tenth times two fifth. Are you with me? Alright. 24 over 5. 
I'm going to multiply, I'm going to go back and multiply this thing. I'm going to go back and multiply this thing 2 over 2. Again, if I were doing it myself, I wouldn't actually do it out physically. You just have to understand that 24 over 5 is the same as 48 over 10. 48 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 49, is 40, 49 over 10. Are you with me so far? And this was 12. 49 over 10 is approximately 5 because 50 over 10 is 5 and this is 12. This is 12 and that's approximately 5. So we're looking for 12 plus 5, we're looking for about 17. About 17, and what about that quantity? That quantity is 2 over 50, I'm just going to ignore it. Let's say we're looking for about 17. To look at the answer choices and pick the one that comes closest to 17, 16.9. Do you understand? That's it. Let's do number, what number was this one? 12.1, this was 15. Number 16 is what we have to do now. Sometimes I feel that when I explain too much that it, it ruins the fun of it, you understand? Number 16. 48.6 divided by 0 0.09. Do it yourself, as always. Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. 48.6 over 0 0.09. Since we have since we have two decimal places in the bottom, we're going to stick a zero here. That zero is to remind us that at the top, we're going to end up with a multiple of 10. Let's multiply top and bottom by 100. Why 100? Because we have to move this decimal two spots. So 0 0.09 times 100 is going to be exactly 9. And on the top, we're going to end up with 486 times 10. Uh, technically, what we end up is 4860. But don't write 4,860, it's just, just going to be a hell. Let's put down 486 times 10. Keep your life simple. Do you understand? I'm going to do it here. 486 times 10 over 9. Now, we learned a long time ago in the basic math series, basic math day 25, basic math day 25, in this series right here, basic math, we learned what is known as what uh, what are, what are known as rules of divisibility, and we know from that video that in order to determine whether or not a given number is divisible by three, one simply looks at the sum of the digits, S U M sum of the digits. Four, four plus eight is twelve. Twelve is divisible by three, and six is divisible by three. That tells me that 486 is divisible by 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. How many 3's does 4 have? 4 has 1 3. Stay with me in the story, it's very important. 4 has 1 3, the remaining one goes and joins the 8, becomes 18. 18 has 6 3's. And 6 has 2 3's. And this becomes 3. Now we end up with 162. 162 is 1 plus 6 plus 2. 1 plus 6 plus 2 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, which means we can divide top and bottom by 3 one more time. And at this point, I'm going to erase this part so that so that it doesn't get too crowded. Oh, I lost it. What was it? Four had one, 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 three, 18 had six, three, 162. Let's divide top and bottom by three one more time. How many threes does one have? One has no threes. One has no threes. That one goes and joins the six, becomes 16. 16 has five threes. 16 has, notice how we crossed 16 together, not one and five. We did not cross out digit individually because we're not dealing with 1 and 6 individually we're dealing with 16 as a unit so cross them all together 16 has 5 threes after we take away 5 threes are 15 after we take away 15 from the 16 we have a remainder of 1 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes 4 and 4 has and 12 has 4 threes and that takes care of this that's it we're done it's 54 times 10 the answer is 54 times 10 or 540 54 times 10 do you understand? Just keep it simple. If you find some multiple of 10, just leave it like this. Don't waste your time actually writing out the whole number. It just makes life easier. Again, in reality, I hope, if you were taking the real exam, as I always remind you, I hope that you'll be able to just estimate very quickly. And if you can figure out, if you can spot the right answer just by estimating it, that's all that is needed. You don't have to do the exact work. Let's see what we can do here. You see, this is 48.6. I'm going to pretend it is 50. 
and this is point, point 0.09, I'm going to pretend that it is point 0.1. Point 0.1 is very close to point 0.09. Can you tell me what 50, can you tell me what 50 divided by point 0.1 is? If you multiply top and bottom by 10, that's it, we are done. We end up with 50 times 10, which is 500, and point 0.1 times 10 is just 1. Of course, I'm, I'm just being silly here, of course 50 divided by point 0.1 is 500. The correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be around 500. And if there is only one answer choice, that's around 500. Because in a, prob in a problem like this, they're just moving the decimal spots. They're, they're just moving the decimal places. One answer choice is going to say 54, another one is going to say 5400, some silly things like this. They're just moving the decimal point around. Pick the one answer choice that comes closest to 500. And the one that comes closest to 500 is 540. You don't have to do it out, you understand? Number 17. Number 17. Let's see what we have for number 17. We have 79.36 divided by 3.2. 79.36 divided by 3.2. 3.2 again. We're going to first hold the decimal place so that we know that at the bottom we can have a multiple of 10 and we multiply top and bottom by 1 with two zeros because we have two, two decimal places, 1 and 2. Multiply top by 100, multiply bottom by 100. And when we do that, what we end up is, what we end up is 7,936 on the top over, this is going to become 32 times 10. 32 times 10. I'm going to leave it like this. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do it uh, a little bit higher. I don't want to work on it so low. So I'm going to rewrite this thing right here. 30, 79, 36. 79, 36 right here. Over 32 times 10. Let's begin. Now we have to simplify it. We have to reduce it. Okay. What can we do? Well, we also learn on day number 25 in basic math where we learn the divisibility rules we also learn how to recognize how to recognize if a given number is divisible by 4 and for 4 what we look at are the last two digits of the number the last two digits of 7 now 7936 are 36 36 is a multiple of 4 4 nines are 36 and 32 is a multiple of 4 let's divide top and bottom by 4 shall we let's begin stay with me in the story it's very important that you stay in the story stay with me in the story 7 has 1 4, 7 has 1 4. After we take away 4 from the 7, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 9, becomes 39. 39 has 9 4s. 9 4s are 36. After we take away 36 from the 39, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 3, becomes 33. And 33 has 8 4s. After we take away 32 from 33, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 6, becomes 16. And 16 has 4 4s. Since we divided the top by 4, we must divide bottom by 4. And bottom here, 32 has 8, 4. Again, I see 84. 84 is divisible by 4 because it's 8 and 4. And therefore, we can divide top and bottom by 4 one more time. Let's do that. How many 4s does 1 have? 1 has no 4. 1 has no 4. That 1 goes and joins the 9, becomes 19. And 19 has 4, 4s. Four. 4, 4 is a 16. After we take away 16 from the 19, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 8, becomes 38. And 38 is, has 9, 8. 9 eggs are 36. After we take away 36 from the 38, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes into the 4, becomes 24, and 24 has 6 fours. Now, since we divide the top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4. 8 becomes 2. Let's go one more round. Since it's an even number, we can get rid of this 2 here. 2 is going to go away. 4 has, four has 2 twos. 9 has 4 twos. After we take away 9, 2 4 twos are 8. After we take away 8 from the right, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes into the 16, becomes 8. And we end up with 248 on the top, 10 on the bottom, 248 on the top, 10 on the bottom, which is why it's always a good idea not to squander, not to squander your tens. If you find any quantity that happens to be a multiple of 10, when, when we're dealing with percentages, fractions, uh, and decimals, save those tens. Don't squander them, don't put them together. If you only put them together, not only it creates a hell of a lot more work, but then you can use it down here. It becomes, it becomes more cumbersome. That's it, we're done. That's why we don't squander our 10, because now it's very easy to see what that quantity is. 248 divided by 10 is simply 24 
point me. And that's all there is. That's all there was. Do you understand? When did we learn the word squander? I'm curious. I'm always curious. Squander. We did not learn recently, but we did learn it. Squander. Just give me a second. Day number 37. Vocab day 37. Just type in just type in vocabulary words, vocabulary words, day 37, and the video will pop right up. If it doesn't pop up, if you don't find it right away, always put my name with it. Any any topic that you're looking for, any math topic, when you're looking, searching for vocabulary or any math topic, type in the name of the topic, along with my name, just put in Keshwani, ratio and proportion, Keshwani, weighted average, Keshwani, percentage problem, whatever topic that you're looking for, for Keshwani work time problems, and the videos are going to pop right up. Do you understand? They are all there. They are all there. There are, there are 2,500 videos on my channel. You will find something on almost all the topics, math topics that you will find on GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, SETs. They are all there. You have to take advantage of them. They are there. You can use them at your leisure. That's it. We are done with it. This was problem number 17. Let's move on to 18. Let's move on to 18. Let's do 18 right here. In problem number 18, we have 7.005 times, times, I'm going to erase this part, we need to, times 0 0.002, times 0 0.002. Well, what can we do here? Well, it's very simple. 7.005, look at this as 7005 times 2. I know, I know 7,000 times 2 is 14,000. That I do know. I also know that 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10. That I also know. So it's essentially 14,010. That's it. Now we can worry about our decimal point. Do you understand? We're going to worry about our decimal point now. Here we have how many decimal points? We have 1, 2, 3. And here we have 1, 2, 3. This point, this marker is dying. The decimal is here. We have to move three spots. Or oh, not three spots. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is this is almost dying. I hope I remember to change in the next video, so I, I don't want to go there right now. So we have to move the decimal six spots. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's going to come right here. We have to insert a zero of our own. That is our answer. And for emphasis, and for emphasis, I'm going to put a leading zero. Always put a leading zero for emphasis. So the final answer is, final answer is right here. Is 0 0.01, 0 0.014, 0 1, 0. Or rather, 0 0.01410. 0. That's it. The answer is 0 0.14, 0.14, 0.1. Number 18. Let's do the penultimate one. Number 19. The second to the last one. Do it yourself as I always remind you. 0 0.0009 divided by 0 0.0003. It's always a good idea to do it yourself first. So let's get going. Point zero 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 nine over point how many? One two three. Zero zero. It can be. They can be the same. Some, I made a mistake someplace. They cannot be both the same. Yep, I made a mistake. This one has four zeros. They can be same because otherwise they won't be interesting. Zero zero and three. I'm going to erase this part now. We are done with it. And now we compare our decimal place and we realize that the top one needs one more decimal place. So we insert the zero there for emphasis, just to remind ourselves that it's there. How many decimal places we have to move? We have to move one, two, three, four, five decimal places, which means we can multiply top 
by 1 with 5 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're going to multiply bottom by 5 zeros, 1, 0, 3, 4, 5, in other words, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 100,000. And we, when we multiply top by 100,000, 0. 0. 0.0009 times 100,000 is going to actually become 90, not 9. Because times 10,000 would have been 9. 100,000 is going to be 9 times 10. So on the top, we end up with 9 times 10. And on the bottom, we simply end up with 3. Divide top and bottom by 3, and you're done. We end up with 3 times 10. The answer is 30. Answer is 30. Let's do the very last problem, number number 20. Number 20. I'm going to erase everything because we need the room, okay? But before I erase it, I'll give you a chance. Take it down in case. Number 20. We have number 20, we have 3.75 divided by 0 0.625. 0 0.625. Let's see what we can do. 3.75 over 0 0.625. Again, the bottom has bottom has three decimal places after the Three, three digits after the decimal, top only has two, so we insert our zero. Do you understand? I promise you I'm going to change the marker, red marker, in the next video. I just don't want to get out of the frame right now. So that zero tell, reminds us that when we multiply top and bottom by a thousand, what we're going to end up on the top is, you see, 3.75, 3.75, 0.75 times 100 times 100 3.75 times 100 is exactly 375 and therefore since we're not multiplying it by a thousand we're not multiplying it by a hundred we're multiplying it by a thousand this extra zero this extra zero tells us that it's going to be times 10 do you understand it's 375 times 10 because we're multiplying it by a thousand on the top not a hundred so it's 375 times 10 on the top 375 times 10 and on the bottom we have 625 let's divide top and bottom by 25 okay pay attention it's very important that you pay attention listen carefully and understand what I'm talking about so we're going to divide top and bottom by not 5 but 25. How many 25 does 3 have? How many 25 do you suppose 3 has? 3 has no 3. 3 has no 25s. It's 4, 3. He goes and joins the 7. He goes and joins the 7 and becomes 37. And how many 25 do you suppose 37 has? 37 has exactly 125. It only has 125. Cross them out together. It has 125. After we take away 25 from 37, listen carefully. After we take away 25 from 37, we are left with 12. We are left with 12, remainder of 12. That 12 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 125. That 12 goes and joins the 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 525. We're going to do it again, okay? Watch here, we're going to do it again. We are dividing 375 by 25. By 25. What are we dividing it by? We are dividing it by... 25. So let's begin our story. How many 25 does 3 have? 3 has no 25. 3 has no 25. 3 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 37. 37 has 125. 37 has 125. I shouldn't have done this curve underneath because now it's going to be confusing. 37 has 125. How many 25 does 37 have? 37 has 125. After we take away 125 from 37, we have a remainder of 12. We have a remainder of 12 after we take away 25 from 37. That 12 goes and joins the 5. That 12 goes and joins this 5. Joins this 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 525. 125 has 525.
we're going to do the same thing here. Again, we're going since we divided the top by 25, we're going to divide the bottom by 25. We're going to do the exact same procedure. I'm not going to do it out on the blackboard. You just have to listen to me, okay? Let's let's get going. How many 25 do you suppose six has? Six has no 25. It's just a poor six. He has no six 25. He says I have no 25. So he goes and joins to goes to his he goes to his neighbor and joins him. It becomes 62. How many 25 does 62 have? 62 has two 25. Two 25s are 50. So 62 has two 25. After we take away two 25s, after we take away 50 from 62, we have a remainder of 12. Just like here. That 12 goes and joins the 5. That 12 is going to go and joins the 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 525. Which should be no big surprise to you if you know your squares. And if you do not know your squares, watch the series, basic math. Just search for something, a title, a video with a title which says know your squares. Or you can just simply type in, simply type in know your squares and then Kishwani. And the video will pop right up. If you know if you knew your squares, you would have realized, I hope you had realized in the beginning, that 625 is a perfect square. 625 is a perfect square. 625 is 25 times 25. 25 squared is 625. And that's the that's the that's the multiple of 25. How do I know it's a multiple of 25? Just look at the bloody thing, it's 375. And if it makes it easier for you, if it makes it easier for you, think in terms of money. If you have three dollars and seventy-five cents, three dollars and seventy-five cents is made up of how many quarters? A quarter is made up of 25 cents, isn't it? Three dollars and seventy-five cents. One dollar is made up of four quarters. Two dollars is going to be made up of eight quarters. Three dollars is going to be made up of twelve quarters. We have not three, we have not three dollars, but three dollars and seventy-five cents. So seventy-five cents is going to be made up is going to be made up with other made up of other three quarters. So four quarters make one dollar. Eight quarters make two dollars. Twelve quarters make three dollars, and seventy-five cents make three quarters, which is why we have 15 quarters, because we're dividing it by 25. Enough, enough, of the, you know, enough of the talk, let's go one more round, divide top and bottom by 5, let's divide top and bottom by 5, 15 has 3 fives, 15 has 3 fives, and 25 has 5 five. We have 5 at the bottom, we have 10 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 5 one more time, 5 is going to go away, and 10 becomes 2, the final answer is 3 times 2, 6, 3 times 2 is? Six. Do you understand? What number was? Oh, this was the last question. This was the very last question. Before we close the video, before I go away, let's do something bonus. We're going to do the exact same problem one more time. We already know the answer. The answer is six right here. The answer is three times two. The answer is six. Will you be able to do this problem? Not in decimal, but in fractions. Will you be able to do it? Obviously, I need the rooms. I'm going to erase everything. I'm going to give you a second to take a look at it one more time. And then we're going to do it with a different method with fractions. And we'll see what happens. Okay, watch, watch what happens. And for fractions, in order for you to be able to do it as fractions, you have to recognize your fractions. It's very important that you have the basic skills. As I keep repeating like a parrot in almost every single video, you have to be able to recognize elementary concepts in, in arithmetic. 0.625 is made up of what fraction? It is made up of 5 8. How do I know that? Listen very carefully. How do I know that? Because 5 8, I shouldn't have to do this thing. You should know this thing from the series here. How do I know that? Because 5 8 is made up of 4 8 plus 1 8. What is 4 8? Oh, that's not going to work. 4 8, oh, 4 8 is half. 4 8 is half, which is 0 0.5. Which is 0 0.5. How much is 1 8? I don't know what one eighth is, but I do know what one quarter is. I do know what one quarter is. One quarter is 0.25. If one quarter is 0.25, then one eighth must be half of that. So therefore, we need half of this. What is half of 25? Well, I know half of I know half of 24. I know half of 24 is exactly 12. Exactly 12. And therefore, half of 25 is going to be 12 and a half. In other words. 1 8 is 12 and a half percent. You add 0 0.125 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.125, you're going to get 0 0.625, which is our 5 8. But you see, I didn't have to do all this thing. If I, if we have to do all of this thing to recognize that, then there's no point in what we're about to do. 
The whole point is to be able to save time, not take three times as much time. Do you understand? You have to be able to just see it and immediately realize, immediately realize in a split second, that's the 5 eight. Divide this, this 5 eight, and we have to divide three quarters. Three quarters. Okay, we're going to begin our story. Pay very close attention as I keep repeating like a parrot. First thing you have to keep in mind, first thing you have to pay attention to is that we are dividing, we are not multiplying. So we want to multiply, we don't want to divide. So let's, let's, let's convert this into 8 fifths. So we have 3 quarters times 8 fifths. That's it. This is where our story is going to begin. Okay? Let's get going. Let's get going. 3 times 8 fifths, 3 times 8 fifths, 3 times 8 is 24, so it's 24 fifths. Plus, are you with me? It's very important that you stay with me in the story. Plus, 3 quarters times 8 fifths. 3 quarters times 8 fifths. 4 is going to go away and 8 is going to become 2. And that is 6 fifths. 3 times 2 is 6. This is 6 fifths. This was 24 fifths. 24 fifths and a 6 fifth is 30 fifths. And what do you suppose 30 fifth is? If you have 30 fifths, that's a 6. I know. 